FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our NFL Week 4 preview between the Seattle Seahawks and the Houston Texans. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Seahawks. The Seahawks are one of the most well-balanced teams in the league, and they do a great job of keeping you off balance defensively. Now this week versus Houston, the focus should be along that offensive line. If there's a place where the Texans can exploit, it's up front, and it plays directly into their strengths defensively. Now on the defensive side of the football, the defensive line, in my opinion, would have to win at the point of attack versus the Texans' ground game. The key is anchoring on the edge and getting interior pressure, and that'll allow the linebackers like Bobby Wagner and KG Wright the opportunity to make plays at or near the line of scrimmage. Now let's move over to the Texans in this ball game and offensively they got off to a great start last week versus the Baltimore Ravens but got away from what worked which was running from those spread sets and this week versus Seattle you want to make that the focal point you want to have the Hawks defensive backs turn into run defenders I would go and spread the field once again and force those guys to stop the run out of a nickel defense now defensively I like the matchup on the line of scrimmage but in all honesty the Texans are struggling on that side of the ball this week versus the Hawks not an explosive bunch offensively per se but they do execute and everything they do is based off the running game or being able to run the football so that's where the team's focal point has to be this week stopping the run and forcing these guys into passing situations and that plays right into their ability to get pressure on a quarterback. In order for the Seattle Seahawks to have some success this week versus the Houston Texans, it's imperative to get J.J. Watt blocked. And I think in a running game, they can trap him and utilize those quick hitters to get the football to the second level and hopefully get big gains on the ground with either Marshawn Lynch or Robert Turbin in the backfield. Now you see how we have it drawn up, double tight set, Maybe this could be a wide receiver, maybe it could be a tight end. We want the condensed set to influence J.J. Watt to come up the football field, number one. Let's say if they line up Watt here, we know they move him all around the formation, but this is mostly instructional for how Seattle can effectively trap block J.J. Watt as he moves up the field, not saying what the Texans are going to do defensively. It's instructional video based on the offensive's tendencies. Now, what we're going to show is how they can get this done. So we're going to have the backside tackle. His job is to work up to get the inside backer blocked. We're gonna have the backside receiver's job. It's a cross face of the outside backer, hopefully to get this strong, this free safety blocked. We're gonna have the receiver work up to get the strong safety. We're gonna have the tackle, the tight end kick out that linebacker here, because this is where we're going. Now we're gonna have this tackle work up to get the inside backer, hopefully influencing J.J. Watt to come up the field because we have the backside guard coming to kick him out center and play side guard combo block that nose that's imperative and we're running Marshawn Lynch right up the four hole so that's what that's one way they can effectively influence JJ Watt to come up field for the backside guard to trap him kick him out thus utilizing that quick hitter getting Marshawn Lynch or Robert Turbin on the second level quickly and hopefully which could turn into a big gain on the ground for the Seattle Seahawks the Houston Texans should be able to apply pressure versus the Seattle Seahawks. I'm not sold on the Seahawks front side, their right guard and right tackle. And I think that's where the Texans can take advantage. I'm going to show you how they can do that with a delayed inside linebacker uh, blitz and also how we're going to slant these guys inside while playing cover two. So we're going to get pressure with five while dropping back into a cover two zone. So you guys understand what cover two is. Bump, drop back into your out responsibilities, drop back. You have your guys responsible for their half of the field. And now what we're going to do, the outside linebacker's job is to play the, he's going to line up in a nine technique. He's playing a nine technique versus the run. He's going to drop back into his hook to curl zone. Outside backer here is going to drop back into his hook to curl zone as well. He's also responsible for the, uh, he's lined up in a nine, responsible for the run if it comes weak side. Now what we're going to do up front is creative. What we're going to do, we're going to slant, quote unquote, J.J. Watt, inside that B gap right here, bringing the, out, the inside back around to secure the C gap versus the strong side run and also keep it contained versus Russell Wilson if he wants to go uh, take himself outside of the pocket. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a delayed stunt by the other inside linebacker, by the weak side inside linebacker, because we're gonna send the nose tackle up and over on the A gap. We're gonna wait, 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 boom. So now you have double A gap pressure and also now the five technique on the outside, the weak side is also playing contained. So that's one way they can get pressure front side. You see you have one, two, three rushers front side with the strong side backer playing 
uh, the run out at the uh, lined up in a nine technique, but dropping back to his hook to curl zone. So front side pressure is key this week versus Seattle. And if they can do that, they can effectively get these guys off the field and put that offensive the Texans back on it. The X Factor for Seattle will be the pass protection. Front side pressure is deadly for a quarterback because you see it coming a mile away. So they're going to have to hold their own at the point of attack to give Russell Wilson time back there in the pocket. And the X Factor for the Texans will be their wide receiver. You see right here, making individual efforts to come away with big plays in the passing game will have to happen this week versus the outstanding secondary of Seattle. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game for Seattle. We've talked about this before. King on J.J. Watt pre-snap is key. You have to identify where he is on the line of scrimmage and set your blocking assignments accordingly. And you want to space out this 3-4 defense. One way you can attack a 3-4, you can run downhill because there's natural bubbles in a 3-4 defense, or you can spread it out and widen out that pressure. That way, Russell Wilson will be able to see where that fourth or fifth guy is coming from. And you want to slow play the run this week, then you want to attack downhill. Don't get over aggressive in trying to beat the guards to the point or try to set the edge. Slow play the run if you're a linebacker, then attack downhill. Now for the Texans in this ball game, you want to challenge the Hawks' aggressiveness in the secondary. So I would look for a lot more double moves, a lot of combo routes to the same side, flood routes. Force those guys to make decisions, and that way you can have big plays deep downfield in the passing game. And on defense, you want to press the wide receivers of the Seattle Seahawks. I talked about this earlier, that they don't have explosive playmakers. They're consistent and they execute well, but you can get aggressive on the flanks with their wide receivers and throw off their timing. And front side pressure, you see the common theme throughout the course of this video for Seattle. They struggle at the right guard and right tackle position. You can get pressure on Russell Wilson. You can also disrupt their running game as they love to run those outside zone plays. They love to run off tackle as well. I like Seattle in this ball game. You look at a team that can run the football very well. They play great run defense and they also excel in pass defense. Now, the one thing that's underrated about the Seahawks offensive attack is the fact that they can get big plays in chunks, whether it be from the running game or throwing the football. So this is a team that can beat you in many different ways. So I think they go on the road and knock off the Houston Texans. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Seahawks fan forums and Texans fan forums for always showing football game plan support.